Hey guys, how's it going? So, um, first of all, if you recognize this aquarium and aquascape, it's because um, it was one of my aquascapes in which I kept uh, the betas, the, the community betas. Uh, but I needed uh, this tank as a nursery for my uh, Fry Acara, Electric Blue Acara. So all of my betas are currently in the big tank with my discus and everyone's fine. And, uh, and here I have Electric Blue Acara Mama with her 200 some fry. So um, for this video, I want to talk about the correlation of water temperature the fish metabolism um, and fish growth and basically I want to explore how to grow your fish fast from the time that they're a fry or from the time you acquire them as juveniles at the pet shop to the size they're supposed to get and how to get them to that size faster um, in a healthy manner also because you don't want to stunt your fish by doing the wrong things so first of all before i get into telling you exactly how to grow your fish um, i want to take you back to uh, how do your tropical fish grow and get uh, to their full size in the nature under which conditions they will get to uh, their natural size and how they can do that healthily so um, most of your tropical fish they come from tropical environments such as the Amazons, Africa, Australia, everywhere where it's warm. So in these places, there's only two seasons. There's the rainy season and there's the dry season. So here I will make a graphic of what goes on in the rainy season and in the dry season. In the rainy season, it's when most, if not all of your fish are born. Uh, rainy season equals fresh water, good water, and it's time for all your fish to, and it's time for your fish to spawn. So rainy season equals baby fish everywhere. And not just baby fish, um, baby um, insect larvae, everything is born during the rainy season. Uh, why so? Well, predominantly because in the rainy season there's a lot of rain equals a lot of fresh water equals a lot of vegetation will grow a lot of uh, insect larvae will hatch and during this season also the temperature is lower because rain water is much colder than the stagnant water or the river water you have whatever comes from the sky will have time to cool down before it reaches the earth and up there it's really cold I don't know if you ever taken an airplane but when the airplane goes up it's very very cold up there so um, during the rainy season in uh, the Amazons and tropical environments where you fish are from uh, the temperature drops to 24 to 25 Celsius not Fahrenheit Celsius and it's during that time that your fry are born uh, so more water equals more fresh water, more flow in the water. So there's a lot more movement in the water. With movement comes less parasites also. In stagnant pools, there's much more than parasites. Also, uh, the metabolism of fish slows down considerably in uh, colder temperatures. But not by much. Because uh, fry fish or juvenile fish, their metabolism is exponentially more faster than adult fish so even though it's colder when they are born their metabolism is much faster just because they need all the calories they can intake also <clears throat> during that season because it is colder fish are less uh, resistant to parasite but yet there's less of them but by being less resistant to parasite also it's natural selection time in which time the weak ones die off and the strong ones survive. <clears throat> uh, during that season, they need less food to grow because it's colder. The water, colder water means less food uh, in order to achieve uh, the same comparable growth as it would be in um, warmer temperatures in which you need a lot more food to achieve the same. Okay? So uh, the fry metabolize their food just as fast as if it was warmer. So where I'm going with that is 
the rainy season is the time in which you need to grow uh, your juveniles. <clears throat> what I mean by that is that juveniles will grow better and stronger under colder uh, water temperatures, meaning 24, 25 Celsius. And I am speaking of pretty much every uh, fish, including discus. <clears throat> uh, in the link below, I will add uh, the, the search and the studies they did about um, the climate and in which um, these fry were born and what temperature. And it, it stated clearly that I'm not saying you have to put your fry at 24 or 25, but if you keep uh, your fry in way warmer temperatures, you will not achieve the same results. I will now explore um, the dry season and why I'm, I'm going with that. Dry season, it's pretty much uh, stagnant water, stagnant pools of water uh, in which uh, water uh, gets less and less and less because it keeps evaporating but there's no more rain to replenish it. So the water temperature rises 30 and above and uh, also the parasites uh, start accumulating in uh, warmer temperatures. But discus in very very warm temperatures 30 and plus begin to be resistant to parasites which is a good thing. Uh, I don't know about other fish, but I, I've read in the article I will put below that 92 pheronites um, will help them expel their internal parasites. So it's kind of a win-win a little bit in these um, harsh conditions of the dry season that they're able to um, fight off certain parasites even though the water conditions are very bad. There's also less dissolved oxygen in uh, the dry season. So they really, really need their metabolism to be fast. So the, um, the warmer the temperature of the water, the faster the metabolism. But the faster the metabolism, the more calories they will burn. Hence, they will lose weight and a lot of weight in warmer temperatures. Just because they need to upkeep their metabolism going to prevent them from getting sick. Now, you following me? Uh, yes, having a fast metabolism will give them a very good appetite. So if your fish have a bad appetite uh, from stress or something like that, not uh, mentioning parasites, just something that prevents them uh, from eating in colder waters, if you increase your temperature, it will increase their metabolism and hence their appetite is going to get a lot better. But also their food intake will end up being much higher in a warmer temperatures. Now, if you keep your, your fish in warmer temperatures of 30 plus, you will need to do a lot of water changes just to deal with the fact that you need to feed them a lot more just to have the same um, calorie intake and that they will keep it for growth. So if you have adult fish, there's no necessity to keep them in such warm temperatures unless uh, they have some parasite issue. You follow me? I hope you are. <laughs> so basically, um, the only necessity um, for you to uh, jack up your heat more than 30 degrees Celsius would be if they have parasite issues, appetite issues, or you, you just want to acclimate them and get them going to increase the metabolism. But it's very, very, very counterproductive if you want your fish to grow and maintain their weight because you're going to do 10 times more the work by having higher temperatures. You'll need more oxygenation, more water changes, and more food just to achieve the same result. So unless your fish are sick, you don't need to do all this in these high temperatures. So <clears throat> basically, the best temperature for fry, in my opinion, would be 24 to 26. Anything higher than that for fry or juvenile fish is going to be counterproductive and make you work way more than you need to. So even though it's uh, cichlids or discus, which are also cichlids or tetras, cooler water temperatures for juvenile fish are more beneficial in order for them to grow faster. So I hope this made sense to you. I will add the links below to um, what I've explored here today. And um, hopefully my fry grow just as fast as yours. And uh, so thank you so much for watching this video. Hope to see you on my other ones. And please subscribe if you liked it and hit the like button. Bye.